Hello, Mioni here, and welcome back to another video for Final Fantasy XIV. This time, 10 monsters that I would love to see as future mounts. So, limiting the list to 10 is going to be painful for me. I try to sit here today and think of the 10 that I would love to see the most turned into mounts. But in general, I'm sure I've missed something that I'll only end up kicking myself over later, and there's plenty of models in this game that could be really good mounts. Anyway, here's 10 monster models that I think not only deserve to be mounts that we can use for our characters, but also would be awesome integrations into future beast tribes or other story-related PvE rewards. Starting at number 10 then, I think we have to give this spot to one of the first creatures that I personally set my eyes on in this game, the Sableback. Out of the first few dungeons we get access to in the game, Brayflock's Longstop holds a monster that I personally would love to see on this list. The Great Sableback, the Yellow Pelican Boss. Literally a bird dinosaur, this boss is nothing special in terms of mechanics, obviously, it's low level but you can't deny its model is really awesome. With plenty of room to sit on its long neck there, there's very little work that would need to be done to make this a mount, and pretty much that's why I wanted to choose it for this spot. It might not be the most impressive visually, but I frankly love it. With its green and yellow giving a unique colour scheme for a mount, and its long swishy red plume tail, I love the idea of more mounts like this one. As an added bonus, it would be really easy to implement where it raises its neck like a fan as a sort of like action button, or when it runs around. I could easily see this as a beast tribe mount personally. But a ninth spot, I want to just bring your attention to the fact that we currently don't have a pudding mount in the game. A massive missed opportunity in my opinion. Puddings, flans and slimes have been in pretty much every Final Fantasy game known to man. They come with a bazillion different colours and variants and are frankly everywhere. But the green puddings are the ones I think of first if I was to think of one, and it would be really cool to sit on one I think. Something to slop around on, make it have horribly squishy noises as it moves. It's literally a perfect mount. We could use the same mounted animations as we do for like the egg mount or something where you're clinging on for dear life to the side of it. That would also be pretty funny. You could have different recolors from many different sources, but it would be just generally nice as a dungeon reward with a low drop chance, and it would be something I think that I would enjoy farming for. For the 8th spot, I would include a sandworm, or just actually any in-game worm in general. They're long, with plenty of room to sit on them, and come in some really amazing colours. These ones just outside the Forgotten Springs in Fanalan in the Sagoli Desert are sandworms with this sort of pale skin and green crystals embedded into their carapace. But you can actually get dark ones that burrow through the earth with purple crystals in some dungeons, and even ones that live inside lava with red crystals. There are some great worm model variants in this game, and I think this would offer another great addition to the things you could sort of get from uh, content like Eureka or even the Bosgian Resistance weapon series, which is kind of like Eureka anyway. Make this a lockbox mount or something from an instance like that. I would be personally incredibly happy to farm for this. I don't want just every future mount to be overly flashy and that's another reason I chose this and I think this is both terrifying and basic to look at. I mean just look at that adorable face, he just wants to have a companion to ride into the sunset with. For the seventh option then, I wanted to include a treant. It's such an obvious idea for a mount in my own opinion. Climb a tree and use it for a mount. I think it would fit perfectly in the game. In particular, the treants in Stormblood areas, like the Azim Step here, are really awesome. They move with their branched arms and their legs float around there below the crystal embedded root tangles of their body. I think it would be really easy to make this a mount. You could sit on the top of the branches and you could make the arms float either side of it as it would fly around and the gemstones could maybe glow. I love this model in general and would love to see more of it. Perhaps this could be a gold saucer mount. For some reason it definitely has that sort of you know, gold saucer appeal in my opinion. For number six, I wanted to go into the Coil of Bahamut and remind you of the amazing Clockwork Juggernauts. These things are amazing. I first saw them, I think, in Final Fantasy XIII, or at least that's where I most recently remember them from, from another game. 
but these are criminally underused. We also saw one of these in the Lightning crossover in Final Fantasy XIV many years ago. We have Magitek walkers in the game that we can have as mounts of varying in types. How cool would it be to have one of these as well? There's even seemingly a place that you could sit your character on its back, this sort of saddled area. Perhaps even a cool AoE spin for an action button, that would be pretty awesome. I love the Juggernaut models, and perhaps we could make this into sort of like a PvP reward or something from the next Rival Wings or something like that. It might make me actually do more PvP if the mounts looked cool. For the fifth choice then, we must step into the fantastic Shadowbringers dungeon Amnesis and Nida. One of the first monsters then that you fight is this fella, the Trench Fuabo. We have rays in the game already, but nothing quite as beautiful as this model. Or at least I think so. The phosphorescent glow from its skin, the colours dancing between its sea green, purple and yellow is just so satisfying to look at. I think most people I played with when this dungeon first came out were blown away by this monster, and most of us actually commented, oh please, let this be a mount already. It would be so easy to set your character on the back there and could easily be a reward from somewhere in the game. It would be cool to see this as maybe a rare mount in the Bosgen Southern Front or something, maybe from a lockbox, since the first time we saw this exact model was actually all the way back in Eureka High Dartos as part of the support fate, if I recall correctly. Absolutely love this one. Fourth place on the list then, I have to put a Talos mount into the equation. Ever since Shadowbringers showed off these gigantic golems, I've been captivated. The whole storyline in Colusia and the side story that features the Talos in particular are some of my favourite pieces of side storytelling in the game. The whole stonework storyline is something I hope gets more love as we tie up the loose ends in the MSQ going forward, and I would love to see a Talos as a reward from maybe the new Dwarven Beast Tribe or something, or perhaps even as a reward from the MSQ as a final tip of the hat. That would be quite nice. Third place on my list has to be a Sin Eater of some sort. I know technically it wouldn't really make much sense to mount a Sin Eater. They are, of course, not something you're supposed to be in contact with or let alone touch them. But Volfri had an amazing agreement with the Sin Eaters in the storyline. It would be cool to have a one-off mount like this that was bound to you somehow. In the storyline in Colusia, we have to fight a Forgiven Jealousy, which is as good as any really to demonstrate this. Something like this would be really cool to sit on the back of or cling on to. Um, it's just something related to reminders of the Sin Eaters, and I think that's something that would be important to add to our uh, collection. I know we already have the sort of Sin Eater Lion Mount from Sacks of Nuts, but it's not quite one of these beasties, is it? Plus, if they wanted to, they could make it so that you mount it by being picked up by its claws, similar to the Magitek claw mount that we already have in the game. Sort of just grips onto you like a gargoyle from Dark Souls or something. That would be pretty epic. Okay, so for my second place, I wanted to choose Deacon the Crab. This is actually a B rank that spawns in the Tempest, and you kill him as part of one of the weekly elite clan Nutsy reward thingies. Fairly unassuming, but it's a logical gap in the current mount roster. There's nothing more fun, I think, than the idea of more mounts like a crab. A crab mount is a wonderful idea in my opinion. It doesn't have to be this exact same model. I'm using it as an example here, it's the one I see quite regularly. You could have something more traditional, like the Cancer Fate boss near Costa del Sol or something. It would be awesome to have a crab, perhaps even and make it walk sideways or something like that as a gimmick, but I think it would be so cool to have our character sit on the back of a big red crab and march off to battle. Perhaps we could even get this from a midsummer event reward or something, which would be such a cool item to receive. And with really so little work involved, I think a crab is a, a very easy model to convert into a mount if we wanted to. And that's really why I wanted to put it here. It's something we've not seen yet that's fairly obvious. Okay, so let's hop into the Drowned City of Scala for my last spot then. I of course chose Kelpie. It had to be on here. I fell in love with this model the first time I saw it and then begged them to reuse it. They have indeed reused this in some other places since, but what a cool mount this would make. Easily one of the most badass horse models in the entire game. It would be just a wonderful model to give us as a mount. I would love actually to see this as a 5 million MGP reward from a gold saucer. Make it something that we have to grind for. 
it would totally be worth the grind and is really deserving of being something more painful to acquire just simply because of how good it looks. I've mentioned it before to you guys in various videos, but it really does make me go wow when I look at this model. And every time the random Q pops Scala, I know that I'm not really that bothered because I get to see Kelpie again. It's a lovely model, and honestly, I would love to see more like this in the game. And hopefully one day, my dreams can be fulfilled. And there we go, 10 models in the actual game I would love to see converted into mounts someday in Final Fantasy XIV. Whether any of these will ever get added as mounts is anyone's guess, but with so many lovely options available, many of which we didn't talk about or show off in today's video, I'm sure they won't have to go far for ideas onto what their next mounts should be. Let me know your 10 mount selection, what you would love to see in the game next from existing models in the comment section below. Do you agree with any of my choices or do you think I've missed an option here? Throw me a comment below, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you all next time.